pulmonary embolism is common acute cardiovascular disease and therefore a CT pulmonary angiogram is quite a common study encountered in daily practice since it's the modality of choice when patients are suspected with an acute PE. CTPA has a high sensitivity and specificity and is readily available. This study is not limited to the pulmonary arteries as the whole lung is scanned, so differentials such as pneumonia and the pleural effusion can also be visualized. This benefit is however countered with radiation exposure and risk of contrast-induced nephropathy. CTPA is performed with IV contrast media or pacification within the pulmonary arteries. This allows direct visualization of a blood clot that will present as filling defect within the vessel. The blood clot can either present as complete or partial lumen obstruction. With complete lumen obstruction, no contrast will be able to bypass the clot, and this will appear as a complete cutoff of the vessel. In cases of partial filling defect, some contrast media will be able to pass the thrombus, and this gives the appearance of the so-called railway track sign when viewed in long axis, or the polar mint sign when viewed in the short axis. Other indirect signs of pulmonary embolism or signs of complication may be dilated pulmonary artery, right heart strain, or pulmonary infarct. Pulmonary artery to aorta ratio over one indicates dilated pulmonary artery. Right heart strain will appear as increased right ventricle to left ventricle ratio over one, or bowing of the interventricular septum towards the left ventricle. Contrast media may also reflux into the IVC and hepatic veins. A pulmonary infarct will appear as peripheral and wedge-shaped opacity that points towards the hilum with a broad base. This is commonly seen in the lower lobes and will be downstream from the pulmonary embolism. The first thing I look at is the density of contrast in the pulmonary artery. What cutoff you should aim for is variable, but I usually aim for at least 200 Hounsfield units. Next, I adjust my window settings to darken the opacification slightly to make it more grey. This can also be done with any CTA. Next, I take a quick lens to see if there's any catastrophic findings, such as a huge subtle embolus. Next, I change my settings to 10mm MIP. This gives a better overview of the pulmonary arteries and makes it easier to search. Then I aim my attention to each segmental artery as I scroll back and forward. I often start with the right superior lobar artery and work my way down from there. I do this bilaterally in both axial and coronal planes. You can usually see the pulmonary embolism very well with this method. However, I do have a second look with any suspicious finding with the thin slices before making the diagnosis. For example, in this case we have multiple emboli. Here is a segmental emboli that we can see well with the 10mm MIP slices. Another thrombus a bit lower is also seen, but with the thin slices we can appreciate the thrombus just a bit better. This is why I usually use the 10mm MIP to search and thin slices to diagnose. Finally, I look at the lungs in the lung window for any differential diagnosis. 